Hello everybody, my name is Alesha Eisner and welcome to the Canadian Money Talk. The channel about Canadian investing and personal finance. Please like and subscribe. I record two videos per week, so make sure you ring the notification bell to get notified each time one comes out. This is uh, part three of a series of six videos on FIRE, which stands for Financial Independence Retire Early. It is a state of financial freedom where the lucky person no longer has to work a nine-to-five job. I'd like to talk to you about in this video about how one gets to FIRE, or at least FI, a state of financial independence. You should have several diversified streams of income. So for example, your landlord, you get some dividend income, maybe you do some contracts. You're a blogger, you produce content on YouTube, perhaps you are an online book publisher. You do some online courses or you're a training provider maybe some online selling. You should have sufficient income from various sources to not have to work or do whatever it is that you enjoy doing. And you should have an emergency fund of several years. So this is uh, living expenses uh, so you don't have to sell stock in case it went down. You should uh, know your expenses so you know what income you need. You should track both income and the expenses and uh, estimate what those will be in the future when you retire. I'll be the first one to admit that expense tracking process is a pain, but I would never make the decision to retire without going through the exercise in detail. It's also a good time to think uh, about how your spending will change in retirement, given that your spending in retirement is the number that really matters. Do you want to live frugally, or do you want to enjoy a few luxuries? important decisions that must be made before you finalize your decision on when you can retire. Next, as a part of FIRE, let me introduce you to the 4% rule. So this is a rule that comes from the Trinity study in 1998, which, using historical market data, determined that if you had stock and bond portfolio and spent about 4% of that portfolio per year when you retired, you would be very unlikely to run out of money by the time you passed away. The uh, standard rule of thumb for a 30-year retirement is to have uh, 25 times, which is 1 divided by the 4% uh, of your anticipated annual expenses saved up by the time you retire. If you want to look out 40 years, if you retired early, you should save up roughly 30 times your annual expenses. Now, me personally, I have roughly 140 times my spending in assets, which means I could have fired uh, much earlier and saved myself the stress of working longer than I had to. Next, let's talk about your financial independence number, which is the number of uh, dollars in your savings account and your investment account that you need in order to be financially independent. So, simple calculation, it's the yearly spending divided by the safe withdrawal rate. So, for example, if you want to spend $50,000 per year and you're using the 4% rule as the uh, safe withdrawal rate, then you need uh, $1.25 million to reach FI. Now, your years to FI are your FI number, which I mentioned just now, minus the amount already saved and divided by the yearly savings. So that would be how long it'll take you to reach FI. Now, your savings rate is important. The more you save, the sooner you can retire. This is based uh, on the concept that if you can live on 50% uh, of your income, you need to work only every second year. And you can see that from the uh, table here. In uh, my last year of work, just as an example, I had a savings rate of about 85%. Please note the following maximums in 2020 for government pensions, which should be taken into account regarding how much money you'll need to spend annually out of your portfolio. So we have Canada Pension Plan maxes out at $14,109 and old age security maxes out at uh, $10,996 uh, per year. Most people don't get the maximum. And uh, the maximum combined payment for old age security plus the guaranteed income supplement is 18177 So the government will bump you up if you have no other income 
to 18,000, which is uh, below the poverty line. Uh, however, these additional pension plans uh, should be taken a into account when you're looking at how much you need to spend. So if you need 50,000 per year and you think you're going to get uh, 25 from the government, well, then you only need to withdraw 25 from your portfolio. While most people uh, focus on the financial aspects as the primary milestones you must reach before you retire, the reality is that non-financial aspects will likely prove to be more important than money in your retirement. Don't make the common mistake of focusing on financial issues without considering what you want your life to be in retirement. So the non-financial aspects of FIRE are the following. Once you've established financial independence, the planning on the financial aspects of your retirement is the most important of the milestones you must reach before you retire. How to do it. As you get closer to the starting line of your retirement, increase the amount of time you spend thinking about what you want your life to be after you're done working. At this point, your financials should be in decent shape, so think less about them and more about your ideal life in retirement. Start putting slips of paper in a retirement activity jar. Plan a retirement test drive in your final years of work. For a fire, I would recommend living below one's means, delaying gratification, saving as much as possible rather than the 15% of income which will give you a decent retirement at 65 and uh, most people don't even do that and of course investing. Take some educated risks with your investing. If you don't trust yourself to invest, automate it with dollar cost averaging and quote unquote pay yourself first. How much you get to invest depends on a combination of income less expenses. Increase the former and decrease the later. Avoid lifespan creep as you make more money. Educate yourself about investing and personal finance. They are very important topics. Read a few basic books and become interested. And finally, have multiple streams of income. For example, dividends, rents, active work income, if you want to work some contracts, some capital gains from active trading if you want to do that, some royalties from a training video or an ebook, etc. You obviously can't stop working if your salary and wages are your only source of income. So here are some ways how people can choose to get into FI. So some people will go all out working and savings, going at full throttle and then stop working. Cold turkey. Other people, on the other hand, will try to get uh, into FI slower, taking multiple hiatuses from work with many retirements, and they don't go all in. So this takes longer, but it doesn't feel as so much of a sacrifice as the uh, people who go all in. So I hope this video has helped you uh, get some ideas of how to get into financial independence and financial independence retire early. If you have any requests on what you would like me to cover in future videos, please put that into the comment section. Please like, subscribe, ring the notification bell, and if you have, a profitable day.